All right, uh, welcome everybody to our Introduction to Weight Loss uh, Surgery Seminar. Uh, I'm Dr. Amit Trivedi. I'm the uh, Chairman of Surgery here at uh, Hackensack University Medical Center at uh, Pascac Valley. And we have a lot of stuff to talk about today. And in addition to all of you guys here, uh, we're trying uh, uh, for the second time now a Facebook Live event. So they're broadcasting that uh, uh, for those that couldn't make it here and uh, you know, want the information. So it's a good thing. We have a lot to talk about today, and everything that uh, we talk about is actually on our website, and these slides will be available on our Facebook Live page at uh, Pascac Valley. So you can come and watch the uh, video of this again if you, if you missed something or want a little clarification. Um, so in addition to myself, we have Dr. Sebastian Eid and Dr. Sarah Wong here. They're two of the doctors in our uh, group of seven uh, surgeons. And uh, you'll hear a little bit uh, from all of us. So our team is uh, pretty extensive. Uh, we have seven surgeons, a nurse practitioner, and a whole bunch of coordinators in the office to kind of help guide you through this process. Uh, it seems a little bit daunting sometimes because every insurance is a little bit different. But through organization and just communication, most of the insurances do cover this surgery. Uh, that we're going to talk about today, these surgeries, and uh, they can all be approved and uh, done th using the insurance. And we'll talk a little bit about that. We're pretty proud of the group that we've assembled. Uh, and what makes us different than a lot of the other programs that you may uh, encounter is that we're a team of board certified surgeons, but in addition to general surgery, we focus on bariatric surgery, and we do the next level of surgery, which is minimally invasive, tiny little incisions for all of these operations, short hospital stays, quicker recoveries, and we're pushing the frontier and getting into robotic surgery as well. Uh, we've been doing that for quite a bit, and uh, that's where surgery is heading. Uh, we've been together as a group for uh, nearly 20 years, over 20 years now. Uh, we did the first laparoscopic gastric bypass in the state of New Jersey in 1999, and uh, we've been doing it since, and we've added to the group. We have the largest experience in sleeve gastrectomies in the state, and Health Grades, which uh, kind of ranks hospitals and programs, has given us their Bariatric Center Surgery uh, Center of Excellence Award for many years in a row. So we're pretty proud of that, and we'll, we'll kind of uh, show, you, show you why that, that kind of came to be. And we've also uh, won several awards from the medical societies like ASMBS, Blue Cross as an insurance company. Um, so we're pretty proud of that. Why is all of this important? Well, I'll be the first to tell you as a surgeon, it's not just about getting the surgery and forgetting about it. This is a lifelong commitment on your part and our parts. Okay? You hear all these horror stories of people gaining weight after surgery years out. We don't want that. It doesn't have to be that way. So our program is structured so that you get the support that you need pretty much the rest of your life, and uh, it'll ensure your success. Right? But in addition to the team of surgeons, you've got to select a hospital uh, that'll be there in the years to come. The good thing about our hospitals is we pretty much go to uh, a lot of the Hackensack Meridian Health uh, Hospital. So you have the main campus in Hackensack, you have Pascac Valley here, and you have the Palisades uh, medical center in uh, North Bergen. So there's a, a bunch of strong hospitals that we go to. The other thing that makes our program a little bit different is that we have a very strong aftercare program. Now the aftercare program, and you'll hear about that in a little bit, is where you get access to the dietitian the rest of your life. In our program, she's free. She's excellent and she's a great resource to use every week if you need to for as long as you need to. Right? We think it's important for you guys to have that access. Exercise. We have a whole fitness center on Route 17 that's uh, Hackensack Meridian Health's uh, fitness center with the New York Giants train. And we have classes there on fitness and uh, support groups that meet there. So you put all it together, and there's always a surgeon available pretty much 24-7, 365. So that's important too. And finally, you'll see on the slide here uh, the insurance. The good thing about our program is that we're pretty much in network with all the major insurance companies. 
so we can see and treat you as an in-network provider. And that's really important these days because, again, there's a lot of copays and things like that. And if you have one of these one-off insurances that we're not part of, we can still work with you and we do not torture you, honestly. That's not our goal, right? So this term morbid obesity is why we're here. And I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Uh, Eid so you can hear him talk a little bit. And he's going to tell you about uh, the problem of obesity. All right. This is Dr. Eid. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. So we're going to talk about the problem of obesity, um, how you define it, what makes you a candidate for surgery. Um, we, we can go through some of that. So this first slide is just to show you what morbid obesity means, how it's defined. And what we do there is we use something called a body mass index. The reason we do that is it takes your height and your weight into account. And you put those numbers together, and a body mass index above 40 is considered morbid obesity, and it's generally about 100 pounds over your ideal body weight. So in that chart above 40, if you look at the picture down here, is the dark orange. Now that makes you a candidate for surgery. There are patients that are a candidate for surgery at a lower weight, a BMI of 35, and that's if you have something called comorbid conditions, which are medical problems that are related to obesity or obesity related. So <clears throat> to give you an idea of what a BMI of 40 is, if you find your height on this chart, let's say you're five foot four, the red number, that weight of 233 pounds, that's a BMI of 40. So the red number with the height there, anything above that number is a BMI of 40 or above, and that makes you a candidate for surgery. Now, if you have medical problems, specifically high blood pressure, sleep apnea, or diabetes, and there's other, there's other medical problems that um, insurances consider to make you a candidate at that lower weight, that's the black number. So that same five foot four person, 204 pounds would be a BMI of 35 and would make you a candidate for surgery at that weight. Now the comorbid conditions, things you already, you, you already kind of associate with being overweight, right? So diabetes, heart disease, sleep apnea, and then there's things that you don't think of as being related to obesity, right? We don't think of cancers being related to obesity, but there's a very strong link now with certain cancers. Some female cancers, colon cancer, um, are really important, and there's a big link now with obesity. Obesity is actually becoming the leading cause of preventable death from cancer in the United States. It's passing smoking now uh, because of the link with these certain cancers. What this means overall is you have a decreased life expectancy. Right? There's only so much reserve in the human body, and over time, as you start developing these medical problems, it affects your life expectancy. If you're young and overweight, you may not have any of these medical problems, because again, the body does have a lot of reserve. But over time, these medical problems will start to develop. And that's why you're a candidate for surgery at a lower weight if you're already starting to develop these medical problems, because you already succumb to some of the side effects of, of obesity. And this has been shown in data, right? It's not, it's not, we're not making it up, but you can think about your everyday life. Think anecdotally. If you walk around during the day, you rarely ever see an 80-year-old male that's morbidly obese. It just doesn't usually happen because you don't live that long. You develop those medical problems we were talking about. The data shows that one in seven people that are morbidly obese are going to live to U.S. life expectancy, which really means six out of seven people will not. And on average, six out of seven people are going to live about 12 years less for men that are in that morbid obese category, and about nine years less in women than the U.S. life expectancy. And that's a significant amount of time that's related to, to these diseases developing over time. So what can be done? We put this slide up because everybody's tried something before. And, and people have had some success, right? These diets wouldn't be in business if they didn't work at least short term. But short term is not the problem, right? Short, long term is the problem. A lot, of, a lot of us, and a lot of you in here, all of you, probably have lost some weight short term, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds. Sometimes you see people lose 80 pounds. It's, the problem is at that point, something works against you where your body wants to put that weight back on, plus some, just in case. So that's the yo-yoing. That's why diets, diets are difficult. So one in 20 people, about 5%, will be able to lose, sorry, will be able to lose that weight on a diet if you're in the more... Again, this is, we're speaking about patients that are about 100 pounds overweight. About 1 in 20 people will be able to lose that weight on a diet and keep it off long term. So that's about 5%. So that means 19 out of 20 people just struggle, kind of losing some weight here and there and then kind of putting it back on. Um, the benefits of weight loss surgery far outweigh the risks of obesity. I mean, the risk of obesity is that 
the issues with those medical conditions developing, decreased life expectancy, and, and something that's not even measured really there. We talk about life expectancy, but how about quality of life, right? How about being able to get around easily? How about being able to play with if you have grandkids or, or even your kids and, and just being more active? I mean, it does affect your quality of life. You may not be sleeping well and you think it's something else, but a lot of times it's just being overweight. You know, you're tired during the day or you're exhausted. Maybe you're just... It's, you're, it's because you're overweight. You know, we hear it a lot from patients, usually around three months after surgery, that they just thought they were getting older, but they didn't realize they were just overweight. Because it's like a lot of things, it comes on slowly. So you don't notice it. You don't wake up one day and you're like, wow, I gained 70 pounds. I feel really tired and I don't sleep well. It's happened slowly over time. So you just thought it was part of, you know, aging. But it's not. Once that weight comes off, you actually start feeling much better. Even in 1991, before we were even doing these surgeries laparoscopically, and there, there was a lot of you know, high risk with weight loss surgery at that point. I mean, that's almost 30 years ago now. Um, even then, and it's still true today, surgery is still the only proven effective means of sustained and long-term weight loss in patients that are morbidly obese. There's no better method. There's no other method, really, that we've found. They've tried multiple medications. There are medic There's probably thousands of medications in trial right now to try to figure it out. I mean, it's the age-old question. But they just can't figure it out, or they work short term and the body has such a reserve or figures out a way where the receptors don't work and those medications just stop working at some point. The slide's a little busy, but it's just to give you an idea of how many of these medical problems resolve or improve with weight loss. So things that you don't think about, like migraines is up there. You wouldn't think migraines is related to, to being overweight, but about 60% of people have resolution um, of their migraine headaches once they lose weight, and that's a significant amount. Right, the things we already know, high blood pressure up to 70%, diabetes almost 100%, 98% resolve or improve, um, you know, reflux disease, fatty liver, sleep apnea, and we're talking 70, 90, 80%. The problem in today's world is we treat all these things as diseases, but honestly, if you look at them as symptoms of the real disease, which is obesity, I think that's the way it needs to be treated. Because once you lose the weight, then all these medical problems improve. So the process, just to give you a little overview, this is the seminar. We try to give you as much information as we can. We also have a, a Facebook page that has articles that, are, that go up regularly. Um, you can also watch these seminars. Um, again, if you wanted to get more information, if you're, if you're interested in what you hear at the seminar, it's something you want to move forward with, you can make an appointment with one of the surgeons in the practice. Um, Adrian and Raina are here today. You can make an appointment on your way out today. You can call. You can go on our website. There's multiple ways to do that. Insurance, insurance uh, pre-certification is just finding out what requirements your insurance has. So this is what kind of turns people off because some insurances will let you have surgery in a couple weeks. Some takes two months. Some take three months. A lot of them take six months. And there's no, there's no real clear reason why it should take six months, but they make you do a six-month medically supervised weight loss program, which we can do for you in our office. Like Dr. Trevetti said, we have a nutritionist on our staff can work with you. We can do some telemedicine visits. So, you, you, you know, if you're, if you're stuck at work or can't make it, you can do it. It's about 15 minutes a month. It's give you some, some kind of goal, some goals and some, some plans to try to help you lose weight or actually get on track. And then you can move forward to surgery. So we can do all that for you. If it sounds daunting, it's that the insurance company wants you to maybe not do it. Right? They say that, that they want you to do it because it shows that you ha you're committed to it, but we've actually looked at these numbers and we found that it makes no difference whether they make you do the six months or have you do the surgery before, because a lot of you have done this stuff before. Right? You're not coming here you know, because you think this is the first step in losing weight. You've kind of been through that struggle. But those are the requirements. You pay for the insurance, so we try to work within those confines and kind of take you through that process. And if we can get some weight loss and learn some new habits in those six months, then you know, it's only going to benefit you in the long term. Once we get insurance approval, we can move on to surgery. Okay? Then we just work with your medical doctor. That's pre-admission testing and clearance are really just like a physical EKG, chest x-ray for most people, COVID test these days for everybody before surgery. All right. Uh, we work with the Hackensack Meridian um, hospitals. We work at Hackensack University Medical Center. That's the main hospital in the Hackensack Meridian network. Um, we have a center of excellence there. We also have been here for, how many years have you been here? I lose count, five, there you go, five years. Been at um, Pascack Valley Medical Center. Uh, surgeons are here every day. Dr. Wong actually sees patients here, has an office here other than our main office in Paramus. Very happy with it here. Um, Everybody gets a private room. It's a good feel. It's not, it's not a big university hospital, so it's a little quieter. 
it's a, it's a, it's a little better. Patient, patients like, like the quiet, not the hustle bustle of the teaching hospital. So in the end, you pick where you want to go. One of our other hospitals is Palisades Medical Center. That's a little far from here. That's in North Bergen, kind of by Edgewater along the Hudson River there. But again, part of the Hackensack Meridian system. All the hospitals we go to, we have dedicated floors, dedicated anesthesia teams that we work with. The radiologists know how to read our studies for our patients. So we've kind of set it up at all these hospitals. So even though Hackensack's the main hospital in Hackensack, you're getting the same level of care at all the hospitals that we go to. All right. So thank you. That's morbid obesity. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Wong to talk to you about the surgical options. All right. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining us this evening. I'm Dr. Sarah Wong, again, one of the other surgeons, and I'm here to talk about the surgery options. So the three kind of more common procedures we do are the bypass, the sleeve, and the banding. So we're going to go over that um, now. So the gastric bypass, um, it reduces meal size. Uh, how do I... So as you can see here, like Dr. Trivetti said, we do everything minimally invasive with small little incisions. The goal of the gastric bypass is, one, to make your stomach smaller. So here we're cutting it down to a, pretty much a quarter of the size of it used to be. And then we're actually hooking it up and bypassing some of your intestines, hence the name gastric bypass. Okay? So it works in two ways. One is you're eating less, and two is you're reducing the amount of calories and the type of calories you're um, eating. So that's kind of what we call the standard of care. All the studies that we talked about in the past have been based on this. Um, everyone loses close to 75% of their, what we call their excess body weight, um, and that's based on your ideal body weight for, um, you know, your height. And we'll go th through that individually in the office when we see you, you know, again, which, what kind of procedure and how much you're going to lose, Okay. Again, gastric bypasses is a standard of care. All those studies and all those um, comorbidities that Dr. Eid had talked about um, were based on the bypass. So, again, you, you don't think about cardiac disease, cancer, diabetes. They're all linked to morbid obesity. We're showing that now. So if you lose the weight, you're going to um, reduce your risk of dying from, again, heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. The other option, and now the more, kind of more popular option, is the sleeve gastrectomy. It works by, again, reducing your stomach size, so same small incisions, okay? And, but it, we don't bypass the intestines. What we do is, again, we just make it into a small, long sleeve, hence the name sleeve gastrectomy, okay? This video is showing, basically, again, it takes this much food for you to be satisfied. Your stomach is about the shape of a football. Some people, it's actually bigger. But with the sleeve, we actually cut out about two-thirds to three-quarters of your stomach. We take it out permanently. You do not regrow it, okay? Some people, they can stretch it out. We try to help you not do that, but there is a possibility. But there's, again, you don't regrow that part of the stomach. And the other good thing about the sleeve is that part of the stomach actually makes a hormone called ghrelin. And ghrelin is what we call the hunger hormone, okay? It's what um, makes you hungry, basically, and makes you want to snack all the time. So, again, we take that out permanently. You don't regrow it. The third alternative is the gastric band. It's basically um, a small balloon that goes around the top of your stomach, and it's adjustable. So everyone's different. Um, some people like it tight. Some people like it loose. But what it does is, again, it restricts how much you can eat. Now, it doesn't do what the bypass or the sleeve does in terms of bypassing and reducing the amount of calories you eat. Um, it doesn't take away that hormone ghrelin. Um, but it is reversible, so that's kind of the only benefit of the band, is that people who are afraid of permanent change, that's the band. However, we do know that the band is, you know, it's, as it says, it's, you know, it's reversible, so it's not permanent. So a lot of people have actually, um, who have had the band in the past, have gotten it taken out, and ended up with the sleeve or the bypass. But again, which option works for you is kind of a discussion that we'll have one-on-one -on -one in the office. So these are just comparing the band, the sleeve, and the bypass. And to be honest, that first line that says safety, you know, the band is the safest, the bypass not, um, you know, they're all safe procedures. We've been doing this for, again, more than 20 years. We've um, improved our technique. Um, all the complications that we talk about have become fewer and fewer, less than 1%. Um, again, hospital stay and weight loss, they're all very, very similar. Um, these are kind of... The, 
the newer procedures that we also do, um, the balloon, something called the gastric valve and the um, V block. But um, you know, if you're interested in that, we can talk about it in the office. Unfortunately, none of these procedures are covered by insurance. So you know, if you're interested, you know, come talk to us in the office. Um, what is the DSG? Is that one of these? That's a sleeve. Yep, it's a fancy vertical sleeve gastrectomy. That's what VSG stands for. So that's which one? Uh, sleeve. sleeve. Okay, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry, for the folks at home, the question was, what is VSG? And it just means vertical sleeve gastrectomy. So, okay. So then, you know, every procedure um, has a complication. You know, we don't do even operations like having your appendix out aren't without complications. So potential complications, there are leaks that you can get in the intestinal tract um, from the sleeve and the bypass. You know, we're cutting the stomach, we're cutting the intestines. Um, so, you know, there's a potential, but like I said, we've kind of, perfected our technique and you know we're always improving so the risk of a leak is fewer and fewer. Um, there's always risks of infections and bleedings but again those are less and less um, and then you know with the bypass specifically nutritional and vitamin deficiencies because you, again you are bypassing part of your intestines so we do walk you through it you know afterwards um, like Dr. Trivedi said the our aftercare program is very important that we want to make sure you're taking your vitamins and we're checking those levels on a regular basis. Um, speaking of aftercare program, I'm going to hand it back over to Dr. Trivedi. Right. So for the folks at home, the question was, if you've already had the gastric bypass, are you limited in your options um, now? And the answer is yes and no. You know, we there are different options, not necessarily the sleeve and the bypass, but, you know, there, there are different, and we do also do revisional surgery. That was, you know, we didn't go over it, but, um, you know, that's kind of a one-on-one -on -one discussion, um, but there are options after a bypass. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Dr. Wong. All right, folks. Well, Hopefully you've gotten an idea in the last little bit, hearing everything, of how extensive the program is. But what really makes this program a little different and uh, kind of contributes a lot to our success is this aftercare program. And you can see the slide centers around surgery. You need the tool to make things work. A lot of the times people struggle with their weight, they can't lose the weight, they lose a few pounds, they gain it back, they lose a few more, they gain it back, and they gain some more. That cycle has to be broken. And you need a tool sometimes to help you lose the weight. And that's what these surgeries are. They're great tools, but you've got to learn how to use the tools right and make them work. Because sometimes you can gain the weight back. We don't want that. This is how we try to prevent it. So initially here, you see in the center, get the tool, the surgery. But then there's a whole circle of support structure built around it. Obviously, you have to see the surgeon afterwards, right? Good thing about our program, again, we've been here for over 20 years. The surgeons are not going anywhere. Uh, we're, we're pretty stable, and you can see your surgeon. And if it's a holiday or if that surgeon's not on call, there's someone always available, right? Next, going clockwise, we have a nurse in the office who is one of the few nurses in the country that's certified in bariatric surgery. So that's a special certification. Not only is she a nurse, she's a nurse practitioner, and then the next level beyond that is a certified bariatric nurse. So we're very, very pleased to have her, and she's been with us for, for many years. Excellent resource. She's in the office basically 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, and a great resource. Next is the dietitian. Everybody eats differently, culturally, just how you grew up. The dietitian that is with us is Jennifer, excellent person. She knows all the differences. She knows all the brand names. She's a great resource. Sometimes just switching from brand A to brand B saves you 50 calories. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it adds up. Those are sort of things that she can work with you on. Shopping lists, whatever you need, she's got. Next, your medical doctor has to play a key role in this. A lot of times, in fact most times, as you lose weight, 
the requirement for blood pressure medication, for diabetes medication, for all sorts of other things goes down, actually, and health improves. We need to be able to communicate with your entire team of doctors, whether it's pulmonologists, endocrinologists, whoever you have, your medical doctor, and be able to help guide them to adjust your medications and, uh, you know, and take it from there. So we're very keen on communicating. We get them letters. We're, we're always keeping everybody in the loop. Next going up is support groups. You can't do this alone. Nobody's expecting you. In fact, it's better when you do it as a group, right? When we all take care of each other and support each other, we can lift everyone up. It's not a competition. It's support. And that's what our support groups are. They meet uh, right now online, but then uh, once uh, things are better, we'll meet in person at the Hackensack Fitness Center on Route 17 in, in Paramus. Um, and they're structured support groups. So we have speakers, we have exercise people, we have a whole bunch of things. And last up uh, top is the bariatric rehab, and that's the exercise physiologist that works with us who's going to design a uh, exercise program for you uh, that's going to be the best, and you can work in small groups, you can work individually, whatever it takes to help you be successful. Yeah, we have a question. You know about the, um, exercise, is it about insurance in work, out network, or... Um, so uh, most of the stuff that we talked about, pretty much all the stuff that we talked about is free. The exercise physiologist is always uh, a little bit of a challenge, but we've been able to work with the hospital uh, to do uh, a fairly cheap, uh, I think it's like 10 bucks a session kind of thing for, for, for a really nice class. Uh, so you can't beat that in a nice facility at the fitness center. And uh, that, that's pretty amazing. You're not going to get anywhere cheaper than that for a, a certified exercise physiologist to help you. Right? All right. Now, the hospital. Everybody wonders, what's going to happen to me when I come to the hospital? And everybody's nervous about coming to the hospital. But it's an important step. All our hospitals have been through training. We've done lots of cases for many years at these hospitals. So much so that we have a dedicated post-operative floor on in pretty much all of these hospitals with all the equipment that you can imagine, experienced nurses, many of whom have already had the surgery through us. In the hospital, you'll sometimes see a dietitian if you have any questions regarding that. And if you need, we can even get physical therapy in the hospital. So the hospital care is pretty solid. And for a day or two that you're in the hospital, that's not bad at all. Then once you leave the hospital, your next step is to come back to the office within the first week. And that first week is when the education and everything begins even more, right? So uh, right now we're doing it online, but when we're doing it in person, it's actually an hour-long aftercare class that we do where we review how to advance your diet, how to take care of your incisions, how to start your vitamins, pretty much everything that you can think of to get you through the first six weeks, okay? You'll meet your surgeon, they'll do the incision check, take off the bandages, and obviously go over any questions that you may have. When you come back for the second visit, which is usually about a month later, uh, you'll not only see your surgeon, but you'll also break off and see the dietitian for a one-on-one -on -one session uh, at that time. So that way, the dietitian gets to know you, you get to know the dietitian, and then you guys work it out with a dietitian to say, look, I can come every Thursday or whatever and work around your schedules. And if you've had a lap band, uh, we can do the first adjustment at that point as well. Then afterwards, we routinely schedule your follow-up because, again, the follow-up is important. So it's usually third month, sixth month, ninth month, one year, and then yearly thereafter as the bare minimum. But you're more than welcome to come in pretty much whenever you need to, to see the dietitian, talk to your surgeon, whatever you need to do, or nurse. Um, so the nutritionist, the nurse, they're, they're obviously no cost. We will do blood work on you at routine intervals just to make sure that you're getting your vitamins, you're getting your protein, the weight loss is appropriate, all sorts of things to monitor pretty much everything. Uh, then we'll see you at the support groups on, that are every month, right? And then even at the bariatric rehab program. And when and if it's needed, we have a great team of plastic surgeons that work with us, and uh, they try to use your insurance to get things covered, if possible, and uh, we can set you up with that. But that's a good day when we're talking about that. All right. Now, 
how do you go uh, through the diet? Everybody wonders, hey, can I really do this? Yes, you can. After you get your surgery, because the stomach and everything that we've done is still fresh, we don't want to overwhelm it with an aggressive diet. So we go through a transition diet. And like Dr. Eid mentioned, because we've taken out some of the hunger hormone and rearranged uh, things, it's actually not so bad staying on thin liquids. In fact, most people report that they're too full the first couple of weeks because of the thin liquids. So you do thin liquids for about a week or two, depending on which operation you've had. Then you do soft, moist, and mushy food, right, for about two weeks. Then soft food, like flaky fish, ground meat. Then you transition to regular food. So it's a four- to six-week diet transition, and then you're fully healed inside and out, and then it's healthy, good, protein-based diet. Everybody worries about activity. Hey, when will I get back to driving and working and getting back to me? We want you to get back to being you as soon as possible. So normal everyday activity. So start walking the night of surgery. We expect that and you will. And when you go home, continue your walking, uh, but no strenuous exercise like hitting the gym hard or anything like that for four to six weeks after surgery. Right? But most people are on a light treadmill or elliptical by week three which is awesome. Most people return to week, uh, work in about a week or two. And if you have a very aggressive job where you're uh, doing heavy construction or climbing telephone poles, you might need some more time, but we can work with you on that. A lot of people ask us, when can we drive? Well, you can drive once you're off the pain medication. And for most people, that's within five to seven days, if that long. Most people don't even take the pain medication that long. So within five to seven days, most people are driving back, right? A couple of quick important points when you come into any hospital. Our x-ray equipment is limited by weight. Right? And if you exceed that weight, which depending on the hospital is anywhere between 400 and 600 pounds, then we have to use our clinical judgment because we can't get an x-ray on you. Right? But that's extremely rare, which is nice. If it applies to you, everybody worries about pregnancy. Depends on the operation. If you get a gastric bypass, then you have to wait two years uh, to consider pregnancy. Okay? Because you, if you're losing weight, you can't support a healthy growing baby. Once you lose the weight, it's actually a healthier pregnancy than you can imagine, free from a lot of the pregnancy-related scary things. Um, but a sleeve gastrectomy after the first year, great time. All right? Lap band, a little bit more forgiving because we can always loosen the band if you were to get pregnant earlier. Then the last thing we have to say is we can't stress this enough, you have to take your vitamins. It's over-the-counter cheap stuff, supermarket brand uh, vitamins. That's easy, nothing expensive. Don't go too crazy buying expensive uh, vitamins. Regular stuff, you just have to take it. Um, so can't stress that enough. Now, insurance. Last couple of quick things, right? Start off by saying we participate in all the major insurances, which is a great thing. Let's start off with Medicare. If you have Medicare, it's one of the easiest. Um, Medicare covers it. You have to do a one-month dietary visit, and the following month you can get your surgery. Okay. Then other commercial things. We have long-term contracts with like Blue Cross Blue Shield, Horizon, United Healthcare, um, and uh, Cigna. So if you're any one of those, those are fairly straightforward. We're in the network. Now, there are a couple of ones that, that we're not in the network for, but we can still work with. And one that comes to mind is Aetna, but most people with Aetna do have coverage that they can come and see us. So that's actually a good thing. Now, just because you have the insurance and your insurance covers it, and we accept your insurance, the insurance still wants to put some uh, uh, speed bumps. So every insurance company has different criteria, right? So basic criteria for all the insurances is you have to meet the weight requirement. Your body mass index has to be above 40, even if you have no medical problems. But if you have a medical problem like diabetes, high blood pressure, or sleep apnea, 35 and above body mass index is the minimum requirement. So then that's fine, right? Almost all the insurances require a psychological evaluation. That's a one-time visit so that you can express to the psychologist that you're making the decision for the right reason. If you're doing this because you want to look like a supermodel, we're not the surgeons for you. That's not the type of surgery we do. If you're doing it for your health, 
and you convey that to the psychologist, that's, that's it. That's all you have to do. Most insurances will not let you go into a one-off program. You have to enroll in a multidisciplinary program because they know how important everything is. Multidisciplinary means a program that has the psychologists, the support groups, the dietitian, all of it in one sort of virtual place. We have that. And then you have to see the nutritionist, right? Um, just to make sure that these are changes that you're going to make. So we educate you on that. Now, some of the insurance companies require a bunch of visits with a dietitian, and they require up to a six month medically supervised diet. And we do that in the office, all right? Some insurances require three months, four months, five months, six months. Basically, it means you come in once a month, talk to the dietitian, follow the advice the best you can, and then you can get your surgery once you finish that, all right? And uh, if you can't come in person for all visits, Jennifer, our dietitian, will do some of them virtually um, through any of the platforms, Zoom, Google Meet, whatever you have, she has. She'll work with you on that. So that's, that's not too bad. That's not, that, that's not that hard. And the advice and the education's actually pretty important. So that's that. Yes, a question. So if the BMR falls below during mm -hmm. that six-month period, then wouldn't get approved? So what they do is uh, they basically look at the starting and the ending. So as long as your BMI is right within that range, they should be okay. They expect up and down. But by the beginning and the end of whatever fourth, the six months that you have to do. If you gain weight from beginning to end, then they give you a hard time, all right? But again, if you follow Jennifer's advice, it, you will lose weight and you will do well with that, right? Uh, so for most people, that's not been the issue, right? It just has to be done as a checklist. All right, now we leave this slide up just to give you an idea of why the insurance companies are a little bit reluctant to pay for this. Surgery is expensive. If you had to pay for this on your own, Depending on the hospital you choose, because every hospital is like a little bit different, these operations that we're talking about are anywhere between fifteen and twenty-five thousand dollars. But most folks have insurance, and they don't have to go through all of this, right? So use the insurance. Now, before we get to some questions, there are a couple of next steps. There's a lot of stuff that we kind of threw at you, and there's a lot to take home and digest and think about. Your next step is, once you think about all of this, is to call the office and say, look, I came to the seminar. I'm willing to sit down with one of the docs. Our pictures are all on the folders that you guys got. You can just say, I want to talk to Dr. Whoever. You can pick whichever doctor you like. Um, we're all good, and we'll all treat you as a team anyway, but you got to pick somebody as a primary, right? There's a little questionnaire that you got in the package. You don't have to fill it out now, but when you come into the office right before then, Fill it out, listing your medications, your medical problems, your prior surgeries, because we need to know about you to give you a safe operation. So don't keep secrets, right? We don't. Um, and give us the names of your docs uh, so that we can contact them, right? And when you're ready, make an appointment for consultation. So we're going to, and then you can see our phone number is up there. Um, so, and it'll be on the video as well on the Facebook uh, page for Pascac Valley Medical Center. And lastly, I think just to sum it up, uh, obesity is a tough disease. I wish there was a cure for obesity. There's no cure, all right? And I don't think there will be in our lifetimes. But we can manage it. And just like any other disease that's really bad, with these tools and the right support, we can put that disease in remission for decades to come. We can keep you at a weight that you may not have been for many, many years and reverse a lot of those diseases or if you're very young, prevent a lot of those diseases, all right? That's the important take-home message. The other take-home message with this is, I know everybody's afraid of surgery and, you know, everybody's like, should I really do it? Is this the easy way out? Think of it this way. Not doing something and just staying the way you are also has consequences. The diabetes, the blood pressure, the heart disease, the wear and tear on your joints. That's scary. And I always tell people, I don't see too many people in their 80s, 90s, and beyond with morbid obesity. So it really affects people. And this is the chance to have better quality of life and spend more time with your family and uh, kids and everything else that you like doing. And this is a good tool. All right, so next step, let's see if we have another slide, is questions. So maybe if I can get Dr. Eden, Dr. Uh, Wong to come up and maybe 
take either corner. We'll, we'll get some questions. But um, maybe I'll start off. If there are any questions online, All right, so I'll start off. So the question um, uh, that's been asked from someone at home is, what does the preparation for the uh, surgery or the hospital look like? Well, like we talked about, you have to come in and see one of the docs. Then we have to formulate a plan and design an operation that's right for you. And the office will work with your insurance to get the approval. And then uh, once the surgery date comes close, and you're all approved for surgery, the hospital and the office will contact you. They'll show you where to show up. And then pretty much you're the guest there. They take you through every step of the way. All right? And we'll work with your medical doctors to get uh, the medical clearance and, and the cardiology clearance or whatever else that you might need to give you a safe operation. And then afterwards, like we illustrated, you'll come back to the office and uh, you'll see us frequently. So it's a, it's a lot of support every step of the way. So don't, don't be overwhelmed by that. All right. Next question. I heard some horror stories, like depending on the person, some people like post-op will have um, a lot of nausea, like continually, and um, just throwing up all the time. You can't really eat, like you're just, you know, like I've heard people say that it ruined their life. I've also heard other people say that's not true, it's fine. I mean, does it right. vary with the person or so, the type of operation? So maybe or paraphrase or? the question for those at home. Right, right. So the question was, we've heard, um, You've heard about some patients who have ongoing nausea and, and issues after surgery, and is that true? So nausea is a side effect of surgery, but it's usually short term. It's usually the first maybe couple days, maybe a week. And in that case, we can usually treat you with medications to kind of get over that. The first month is the hardest. You are getting used to something new. The most common reason for, for throwing up is that eating too fast, right? We're so used to eating a, a, such a different amount of food or a large amount of food is that once you have the surgery, I mean, you're going to eat two or three bites and you're full. And I think patients or, or post-op patients don't realize like that's it and they don't believe it. And sometimes you just end up eating too much and then you can vomit. Um, if you're having long-term issues, there's probably an underlying issue, right? So it's not common. And if you do have surgery with any bariatric practice, you want to do it somewhere where we do these surgeries all the time. I mean, we're the biggest, bariatric practice in the state of New Jersey, and we can, we've seen it all. It's not a common thing. It's like anything. You can have some complications. You may get a small hiatal hernia that may need to be fixed afterwards. There's usually something that we can do to make it better. It's, it's not realistic for it to be forever that you're nauseous. Right. Your skin looks very ruddy. They just yeah. look like malnourished because I feel like they're not absorbing things properly. That's a good that question. An um, all right. So the question was that some patients who have surgery will look sickly or malnourished after oh. surgery. So we've heard that question before and never want to blame anything on the patients. But if you don't follow the rules afterwards, if you're not taking your vitamins and not eating healthy, you know, you are going to look sick. You are malnourished. You're losing that weight. But that's why it's important to have the aftercare program and have the follow-up in a practice, again, that does this stuff regularly. If you look in New Jersey, every little hospital has a, bari a so-called bariatric program, right? I mean, surgeons can do the surgery, but that's not the whole. That's not, that's not, bariatric, that's not a bariatric program, right? You need the follow-up, and you need people pushing you and making sure you're doing the right things. So if you're not exercising, and you're not taking your vitamins, and you're not getting enough protein, you're going to look sick. And that can happen, but that's something that if you're doing all the right things, should not happen. Okay, because I'm thinking, like, if you are doing all that, could it be just an issue of the fact that your absorption rate is much less because you have less stomach mass? And, I mean, is Sorry. it something that you uh, might not be able to yeah. help even if you're doing everything you can? Sure. Like, no, and you don't want to look sick, you know? Yeah. No, no, of course. Yeah, and, I'll, and I'll repeat it for the folks at home. She was asking, like, is it actually a function of surgery where because you're absorbing right, even though you're trying to do the, do the right thing? And the short answer, like Dr. Eid said, is no. If you're doing the right thing and you follow along with our guidelines, which are not that bad, actually, there's no reason for you to look sick. In fact, you'll look healthier than, than ever. Uh, and, and that's our goal for everybody. We, a, lot of patients, a 
a lot of people are non-compliant, right? We see patients, you're gonna lose weight and they're happy that they're losing the weight, but then you'll see them like a year later and say like, oh, you're taking your vitamins? Like, no, I just don't do it. Yeah. Like, what do you mean you don't do it? I just don't feel like taking it, you know? And then you are gonna, and we try to warn them, like you can get really sick, you may not feel sick now, but, but eventually, you know, your vitamin reserves will run out and you'll start feeling sick, your hair may fall out, your skin color may change. Mm -hmm. Is your stomach absorption rate decreased though because there's less mass of the inner stomach? Oh, from a sleep gastrectomy you're asking about? Yes. Your absorption should be pretty much normal. Yeah, that's not, that's not affected so much. No, but with the bypass or any of those malabsorptive procedures, it's a function of the surgery for you not to absorb everything. Uh, we do check your vitamin levels at six months, every six months for the first two years, and then every year after that. And if you have deficiencies, then we need to supplement more. And I think one thing that we can clarify is everybody thinks their food gets absorbed in their stomach. And that's uh, not as much as you think, actually. It's actually very little. It's the small intestine that actually absorbs uh, the nutrition out of the food. You just have a smaller stomach in the sleeve. We're not touching the intestines. That's why absorption is very good with the sleeve. The gastric bypass, on the other hand, we're actually rearranging the intestine so that you have less intestine sort of to absorb. So that's why in the bypass, it's a little bit more uh, uh, imperative that you follow along and, and get your proteins and everything else. Right. Excellent. Right. Good question. Good question. question back there? Yes, my question was, uh, through the three different surgeries you have, the calorie intakes would be the same or you could substitute that with vitamins and nutrition food or, or liquids? Like your friends, you got like 2,000 calories a day. Do you get the same? So I'm going to, again, try to phrase it for the uh, people at home. I believe the question is, with the two different types of surgeries, meaning the sleeve and the bypass, are you absorbing the same amount of nutrition and basically is your caloric need the same? And the overall answer, overall answer is yes and no. So again, the sleeve and the bypass work slightly differently. They both restrict how much you're eating, but the bypass, again, you're not absorbing all the nutrients from the food you eat. So, and as you lose the weight, your needs will go down less. So not everyone needs 2,000 calories. You know, I probably don't need 2,000 calories. You guys probably don't need 2,000 calories. So everyone's different. And that's why, again, the aftercare program is important because we check on you every six months um, to every year to see what you need, you know, and that's the importance of Jen too, that she will go through your food journal, she'll tell you what you're doing right, what you could change. So I hope that answered your question. <laughs> yeah, that uh, caloric question we get a lot. And you'd be surprised how efficient our human body is. If you're growing, yeah, as a teenager, as a young person, you might need that 2,500 calories and, you know, all this protein. But to maintain, you don't need that. And to lose, you certainly have to restrict, right? Because remember, you have reserves that you want to melt. And if you keep feeding it, you can't melt off the reserves. Now, all the fat that we have on our bodies is actually stored energy and stored nutrients. And the fat can be converted to everything except water, so you got to drink your water, except vitamins, so you got to take your vitamins, and except protein. So you have to eat your protein. Everything else, the fat can pretty much provide your body with for the most part. All right? So think of it in those basic terms. But good question. Yeah. Oh, somebody from home. Let's see. Um, how much overweight do you have to be for consideration? Right. So the question is, how much overweight do you have to be for consideration for these surgeries? Uh, again, a common question. Uh, it's not so much how much overweight you are. It depends on how tall you are as well. So 50 pounds on a 5 foot 2 person is different than a 50 pounds on a 6 foot 2 person. So the way we correct for that is calculate something called body mass index or BMI. If you go to our website, the lap-associates.com, it's right there on the home page. You can punch in your height, you can punch in your weight, and you'll get a number. If that number is 35 and above, you're kind of falling into the danger zone. Definitely if it's 40 and above that ratio, you're in the danger zone. And 35 and above, and if you have a lot of medical issues or a couple of medical issues, you're in the danger zone and you would qualify for surgery. Yes? Is there um, research on, you know, that people aim to lose weight and they have 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 to lose 
research that can tell us, like, if you're an emotional eater, maybe you have more or less success with these types of uh, surgeries? I don't know if there is any Paraphrase research for it. that. Yeah. So, oh, uh, the the question is 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 the certain is the way that you gain weight, or if you're an emotional eater, or you're just hungry all the time, if those things make a difference in your weight loss long term. Um, I don't think there's any real good research for something like that. I mean, what we find is the sleeve definitely reduces your stomach size. So if you eat large meals or you feel like you eat a lot, that will help more often. Um, sometimes people's metabolism is just slow. I mean, that's really the biggest issue for weight loss um, afterwards. And, and the only way to really fix that is even when you're losing weight with us is you do have to exercise. You want to try to build some muscle. No matter what you do, it doesn't have to be weightlifting. I mean, yoga builds, ex builds muscle that has resi anything with resistance, walking up hills. Um, I know a lot of people have bad knees, you know, can't really get around very well, little weights in your arms. It doesn't have to be that much, but you got to keep those muscles moving. Building that muscle is really what's going to help you long term. And how is drinking alcohol? Uh, um, so, so alcohol, uh, the question was how does drinking alcohol play into weight loss surgery? So y you can drink alcohol after weight loss surgery. The, things, the couple of things you have to consider with alcohol is alcohol has a lot of calories, so you do want to be careful with drinking alcohol. Definitely in the beginning, you want to refrain from it while your stomach is healing. And when you, if you do start drinking alcohol after a while, you have to be careful with your tolerance because it will change for a couple of reasons because you're, you lose weight, so your tolerance will change from that standpoint. And depending on what surgery you have, your, the alcohol may go through your system a little bit faster and get absorbed quicker, so you do kind of have to pay attention to that stuff. But, yeah, you can have some alcohol. All right, next question. Right, so the next question is, uh, how long do these operations take? So these operations have been kind of refined over the last uh, over 20 years. And a sleeve gastrectomy is anywhere between 45 minutes and maybe an hour and 15 minutes. And a gastric bypass, maybe an hour and 15 minutes to maybe two and a half hours, something like that on average. So it's a small investment of your time under anesthesia to give you a tool that's going to last you the rest of your life. That's, that's, that's incredible compared to just even 20, 20 years ago. This wasn't, this wasn't possible. All right. Will I need special care when I arrive home from the procedure? All right. The question is, will I need special care when I arrive home from the procedure? So the answer is not really. Again, we want you to kind of walk around, be yourself. Again, the goal is not to do anything too strenuous for the first six weeks. Um, you know, if you have someone at home to help you out around the house, that would be um, better. You know, again, your the biggest restriction is no heavy lifting, so nothing over 10 pounds. So you'll have to find someone to do your laundry for you. <laughs> um, and then the the only other restriction is again the the diet that we talked about. So you want to make sure that. Um, you're prepared at home. You don't want to be running to the grocery store the day you, you know, go home from the hospital. So, and we talk about all that, you know, pre-op in the uh, in our consultation. You know, you talk to Jen, so we'll have you all prepared for being at home. And you can, you guys can see from the type of questions that we're getting how people are nervous about almost every aspect of the surgery, and. You know, what keeps us motivated and our team motivated is that we see a lot of folks, pretty much everybody that we've met has come through a seminar like this online or whatever, right? And when, when we do the surgery, a couple of months later, two, three months later, most of those folks, literally vast majority, over 90% of them, 95% of them say, why didn't I do this years ago, right? And that's like better than any thank you for all of us. Because it's like something that we did that didn't take that long that gives you a tool and they have been at a weight that they haven't been in three months. If you lose 50, 60 pounds in three months, which is often the case, when was the last time you guys were 50, 60 pounds less? And for many, year, for many, for many people, it's like, oh, that was maybe like 8, 10, 12, 15, 20 years ago. That's turning back the clock. 20 years ago, you didn't worry about running out of breath. 20 years ago, you didn't worry about your knees. 20 years ago, you know, that sort of thing. So questions are good, but look at the big picture. A question in the back here.
So the question is, um, after weight loss, if there's extra skin, how is that dealt with? So <clears throat> we get that question a lot also. Uh, a lot of it does. A lot of it does. So, so just so you know, less than 5% of patients who have weight loss surgery ever get any kind of plastic surgery after. Less than 5%. About 95%. A lot of the skin goes back at, you know, sometimes you'll have a little bit of loose skin around your stomach. But, but most of it will go back. The skin takes a lot longer than your weight loss, right? Your weight loss may be six months to a year. The skin may take longer than that. It's been stretched over time. And then if you're losing, let's say, 50, 60, 70, 80, even like 80 pounds, your skin's probably going to be okay. Now, if you're losing 100, 200 pounds, we're talking 300 pounds, we have some patients that are really large, that's a different story. It becomes a medical issue maybe at that point. And usually insurance, if it is causing infections or issues, insurance will cover it. But for cosmetic reasons, insurance usually will not cover it. Do they typically consider it cosmetic if it's not causing an infection? Like if, if it's, it's not, if uncomfortable, then just it depends how uncomfortable it is. But yeah, usually, yeah. insurances will not pay for um, will not pay for skin removal if it's not deemed medically necessary. Yeah. And again, you, most patients don't need any of it. It seems nerve-wracking, like, what am I going to do with all of this skin? And everybody thinks it's excess skin. It's not excess skin. It's the same skin that's on you now that'll be on you then, right? And if you stretch it out over fat, it's scary and unhealthy. If you stretch it out over muscle, it looks so much better, yeah, right? And that's your incentive to exercise and eat your proteins and take your vitamins. And that's why folks that follow in our program, less than 5% ever say, I want it done. Most people are like, I'm good. I'm better than ever. It's pretty rare. But good question. Yes? Uh, for the head of line doing jobs like moving and delivery, the mm -hmm. one way to, how long the procedure takes to heal and how fast can I go back to work? So the question for the folks at home is, for those who do a lot of heavy lifting, uh, manual labor um, for their jobs, how long can they get back to work? And six weeks. So we re ideally want you to wait six weeks. That allows for the incision to heal. That allows for that seam on the, bi on the sleeve as well as the seams on the bypass to heal. So if you have um, you know, short-term disability or if you need paperwork done, our office handles all of it. But six weeks is the magic number. I mean, just to clear it up, six weeks, not six weeks to go back to work. Six weeks before you can do heavy lifting. You can go back to work in a week or two depending on what you're doing. And, and the short answer is we're on your side, right? So if you need a note to give you light duty, we can do that. If you have time coming out to you, and if you're doing a desk job and you have the six weeks coming to you, that's easy for us to give you, right? If you're doing a lot of physical work, like Dr. Wong said, take your time. You got the rest of your life to work, right? Take your time to heal right. We will take care of the paperwork for you. And most jobs do have some short-term disability that you can do. And the girls are very good about filling out that paperwork. And if you really must, must get back to work, look, if you're strong and you've been doing it for a while and you use some common sense and get help at the job site when you need it, we've had people go back and, and just do it because they had to do it for their families or whatever they needed to do. We'll work with you on that. That shouldn't be the limiting factor, you know? That should not be the limiting factor as to why you wouldn't do something like this. Hmm? Other questions? Yes? Yeah, so the question is, uh, you can't afford the uh, operation after uh, the insurance. So the good thing about, our, again, our program is that we're in the network. So whatever you're, so the only expense, because we don't like surprise kind of bills or anything like that, the only expense you should have is your copay and your deductible. So you should know that already. And if a lot of people, especially this time of the year, if they've already met their deductible, then that's not a factor. Right, and the copay and the deductible sometimes can get it to be a little bit uh, higher. And if that's the case, we will work with you on that. That is what we've been doing for the last twenty years, yeah, right? We have to help you work with the hospital. That's 
that's yeah. that's where that comes into play. Yeah, that's what because yeah. I already called the insurance and I already found out. Out of my pocket, it's still going to cost me almost six thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean it, that's why insurances pocket, have after. so many deductibles now. Well, we'll have to look at the different hospitals. Sometimes we can talk to them. Uh, sometimes they have payment plans, but it's usually not anything that goes to us. Okay. Yeah. And for us, we've really been, I mean, we've had people literally do $20 a month. And as long as they do it, that's fine. You know, because again, we got to see you forever. And for us to say, yeah, because we know people switch jobs. We know people like, today I'm working here, but I'm off for the next three months and then I'll get another job. You can't say, oh, I'm not going to come and see you guys because I'm unemployed. Just come and see us, get your health care so that when you're healthy and the new job comes along, you're the right person. And again, having done this for 20 years, we're not, you know, if you lose your job for six months to a year, who cares? Come and see us. Yeah, we don't want you seeing anybody else. Don't. Yeah. So that's not the safe thing to do. Because you know what? A year from now, you will have insurance or whatever, right? So don't let that, uh, don't let that scare you. All right? And then the girls are very good in the office. They'll, they'll sort it out for you. Good. All right. Well, this was an ex a, a, kind of an exciting session, and it's always great to meet people and, and uh, you know, get to, get to see my colleagues because they're in different operating rooms. We never get to see each other. We're all running around, so it's always nice. And we thank everybody for coming and those folks at home that are uh, attending. It's all good. A lot to think about. And when you're ready to take the next step, which is just to talk to any one of us. Give the number that you see on the screen and, and that's in your folders and that's on the video a call. Tell them you came to the seminar and pick whichever doc you like and uh, let's, let's take it from there. You can, again, you can even make an appointment today on your way out. Adrian and Raina can fill yeah, they're here. if you'd like to. Right, if you know you're ready for the next step, uh, Adrian and Raina are out there right now. Just, just make the appointment and those at home, call tomorrow and tell them you, you were here this, uh, online tonight. And uh, we're going to stick around here in person. So if you guys have any questions, we'll get our mask on and we can just uh, socially distant ask uh, and answer any personal questions that you guys may have. But if not, thank you everyone for coming and uh, get home safe and we look forward to working with you. you. Take care. Yeah.